In this video we're going to use a light sensor to pick up how bright it is in a room and we're going to show that data on a micro bit using very simple just blocks of code. Uh, after that we're going to use a USB cable to send that data to a computer, to a PC or a laptop and from there we can open up a Python program Thony and we can see the data streaming in over that serial connection that point we're going to save it onto a CSV file just like a spreadsheet you know like Excel or Google Sheets or whatever and then we might like show that on a graph what our light levels are doing and right at the end we'll look at what the trend is and seeing is the light going to go up and make a prediction and what you'll end up with is you being able to type in hey what's the light going to be in two minutes according to the current trend and it'll just tell you, oh, it's going to be 340 things, whatever they measure light in. We're going to go to makecode.microbit.org, click on new project, call it a thing, things, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we want to get rid of pretty much everything. Start off with a blank canvas. The first thing I'm going to look for is I need to read whatever is coming in on pin one. So I'm looking down for pins, it's under advanced. I'm looking for an analog pin. I can see that I've got it connected currently to analog zero. Now I need to show the number. So I might just do basic forever and show number. And then the number I'm gonna show is, you know, the value here. Forever, keep showing analog pin one. Now, if you do that, that will kind of work. I would advise you, however, to put a small little pause after the end because it takes so long for the value to scroll across the screen that there's hundreds of values streaming in behind it and stacking up and sometimes you can end up with a traffic jam. Uh, so this tends to avoid that. I'm just gonna try that there and, and see what it, what it does. So I'm going to press download. You should be able to pair up your micro bit. So you click connect, give it a moment, download to your micro bit. You see it flashing there. And while it's flashing there, let me just show you, see these little indicator lights. So when I put my hand over there, my finger, no light, light, no light, light. Now just something to watch out for is sometimes it actually registers a zero when it is picking up something and a one when it's not, which you think would be the opposite way around. But anyway, this is analog, right? So it's not gonna give us a zero one, that's digital. This is gonna scroll across things with a screen. Now it's a bit slow. So right now we've got four, nine, four. Yeah. And then if I put it up near the light, I should get a different number, not necessarily a higher number. You see, it's actually going down one, one, three. So yeah, inputs are kind of upside downy. Sometimes the more input they get, the lower the number. Um, so anyway, just something to, in case that's not making sense, you're not doing anything wrong, that's totally normal. All right, so there you go. It's scrolling uh, that across the screen. It works just fine. I'm now gonna go on to the next step, which is writing this out into a, a little graph or streaming it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go into serial. Serial right line and the same thing. Just that, very simple. And now when I run my program, it'll show something in the simulator there. And what I'm hoping is that it will show, I, I don't know if I can actually adjust the light level here, can I, on pin, uh, pin zero? I can kind of move it up and down there to simulate stuff, you see like that? I'm simulating a change of input here. It's not really what I want because that's just a simulator. It's not actually doing anything. I need to get the device down here. So what I'm going to do instead is going to um, basic, just do this once at the start of your program. On start, go back into serial, and down here should be serial redirect to USB, like that. Now when I download that again, it should redirect the data down the USB cable, and I should see popping up here soon um, some actual data being re read. So I'm just going to stop and go, there we go. So show real life data that's coming in right now. So now it's reading the light level in my room. 
give it a moment because it takes a while to start off. And you can see it there kind of going up and down. I should get, it's got 101, 101, 101, 259. Okay, so when I cover my light sensor with my finger, let's just see what happens. I expect it probably jump up to quite a high number because it said it's kind of inverse, less is more. And when I take my hat, my finger off, and it's kind of getting some evening sunlight there, it should go uh, back down. All right, so there we go. That's reading in serial data, which is perfect. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and stream this data into Thonny. So I'm gonna open up Thonny and the code for this is under STJ handy code. I've got it up there on GitHub. So you wanna to go to ALT4 inputs microbit serial and you're going to start at this one here number one and let me just open it up click raw copy everything in here into thotty when i run it it's going to give me a problem there because you see number 23 that's not right that's not right at all i'm also just going to save this because it tends to run better once it is saved i'll just save it as a desktop like this thing whatever it is and then it's giving an error here because i've got the wrong serial port this tends to change um, with every computer you're on. You're just going to click Device Manager. I just type DEV in the Start menu to open the Device Manager. If you're on a school computer, it might come up with permissions or whatever. Just click it. You still have permission. Okay, I've got one thing on COM1, COM3, and COM9. Now, you might just have one. I'm not sure which one it is. I see I've got a USB microphone attached as well, which I'm speaking into right now. So I'm not sure. That's my mouse. COM1 is always your mouse pretty much or keyboard. And it's one of these. So I'm going to try three. Okay. So let's just see what happens when I run this program. Give it a moment. Starting to read. I'm not getting anything at all there. So I'm going to try instead. Press stop. And press type nine instead. Com nine. That was the other option. There we go. Excellent. One, two, four. Now it's coming into Thonny. One, two, three. Brilliant. And that is matching up with what I have there on my microbit screen scrolling across. You'll notice it also includes all this junk data, ORAN and yada, yada, yada. So we're going to give you a slightly different version of this code such that it removes that and replaces it with basically nothing, which is another way of deleting it. So you're going to not do the next one here. This is actually a little bit of code to do basically this, to send some data in case you didn't want to go through microbit um, website and make your own code. Uh, you're gonna do this one here, serial PC read explained. So this is the same code again with a new section. And the new section on it, it just takes in the data, but it starts stripping away and deleting. You can see here, just cut it off at this point. Take any spaces, replace it with nothing. Take this, replace it with nothing. Take this junk here, replace it with nothing. You know? And then print it to see if it works and let's take a little break. Um, I've got some, you don't need these try while, you know, keep your while true loop there. I, I probably shouldn't be using these try and accepts. It's just because sometimes I'm using sensors that constantly throw errors, like those dodgy DHT sensors sometimes. So I'm just saying, hey, look, if you get an error, don't crash my program because I'm going to be leaving this running for 10 minutes. Just just skip it, it's fine, you know? Um, and this accept statement means when I hit control C to stop my um, program, I, I can close it. But you know what? Like I can hit stop as well, so it's fine. All right, let's pop in this whole program. Remember that we're using number nine for the com, so I need to update that again. Stop my program and run it again. And what I should see this time is much cleaner um, code coming in here. You still may get some junk depending on what is coming in. Maybe uh, things are a little bit out of sync or you need more of a delay um, and you're, it's getting loads of junk coming in with it. But that actually looks pretty good to me. Super, okay. So now that I've got this coming into my program, Actually, with this code, you're less likely to get an error and more likely just to get nothing, 
because of all these <clears throat> pretty dangerous try and accept statements, it'll if if nothing works, it'll just um you won't see anything. So I'll just show you what you do here. You just get rid of all this completely. You will need to leave it while true, otherwise it'll only read data once. Okay, and then you'll need to just unindent this so that it's only once there. Okay, and that will run again. And look, it'll be fine. See, program runs just fine without any of that junk. All right, but at least now, if I have an error in it like this, see, if I put in this junk line here, that wouldn't have even thrown an error. The if the program would have just kept going and just ignoring this and be like, no, nothing happened. Don't worry about it. Okay, so obviously that's hard to. <laughs> Fix an error when you don't know what's going on. Doesn't even tell you what happened. So I'm I'm gonna just get rid of those things. Just keep things simple, right? Super. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, put this into a Python list and uh, see if I can capture that data. So all the dirty data is coming in here, coming in as microbit data, getting cleaned up, and getting read out here as signal in. So I know at this point here it looks good. I need to append this onto a list. But of course, I need a list to start off with, right? So what I'm going to do is scroll up here to the very top and just make a list. Listy Mac list face is equal to square brackets, nothing in it. Now, normally a Python list has stuff in it, you know, or I like a word, but there's nothing in my list. It's just for later, right? I say listy mac list face because if you use seemingly sensible words like list, you might find that they're actually a keyword. Like for example, you can't use while, you can't use true, you can't use print. So I know this seems silly, you know, maybe listy is just fine, but sometimes putting in slight variants of normal words keeps you safe from accidentally stumbling on keywords if you're not sure what they are, right? So I'm going to use this list now to, to gather those values. I'm going to just go uh, the name of the list, which is listy mac list face. And then I'm going to append something on it. Append means apply some glue, stick it on the end. The reason I say that is I don't want to say add something to the list. By the way, what are we putting on to the list? We're putting in this variable here, signal in. I don't want to say I added to the list because when I say that, people go, oh, uh, do you mean do you add it to the beginning of the list or do you, it could have inserted in the middle. If you say append, you always remember that the variable gets added to the end of your list, all right? So any new data will be added as the last element on that list and keep going, keep going, right? Um, that's gonna do great things. The problem is I won't actually know what's happening unless I print that list. So this will probably create a growing list of data. Now, not literally printed, my bad. Okay, here we go. And there's 160 on the list. 158, it's gonna add that to the list. There we go. See the list is building up with every uh, thing that comes into it. Lovely. And that's great because now I can do things like statistics, I can get the mean of it, I can get the mode, once it's in a list, it's very, very useful. Um, well, I'm going to stop it here, and I'm going to go on to the next part, which is putting this stuff into a CSV file. So we'd like to put this data into a spreadsheet so that we can do graphing and predictions and all that kind of thing. So a spreadsheet, also known as a CSV file, comma separated values, basically just stuff with like this. That little comma is how Excel knows to put this in one cell and that in another. Excel, oh my gosh, cell is in the name. Oh, it occurred to me now, it's like tinfoil. One day someone said tinfoil to me and I just realized they're two separate words. I just set them together in my head. Anyway, you're gonna go into this here and you're gonna go right to CSV. This is under a handy code and AL2 to this graphing one. Look, I'm just gonna use this, this bit of code here. Cool. Copy paste that. When you're copy pasting, it's probably a good idea to open up in raw, like that raw, and then put it in here. Okay. Now, uh, I have a little job to do here because I need to indent this such that it is 
you know, part of this little loop. Um, you know, what, I'm, what I might actually just do is, instead of just doing while true forever, um, I might just gather like a few data points. So the way, what I'm gonna do is instead of going while true, I'm just gonna go to do something five times. And to do that, you just go for x in range. You could go for pizza in range, x is just a variable. For x in range, and eh, let's do it, let's take like five values, okay? And then I don't have, don't have to keep indenting all of this stuff. Now, now I can actually, you know what, I can, I can unindent this. So oops. <laughs> So you just select it all, hold down shift, and there we go. So my this chunk of code here is gonna run five times, and then it'll be done. Just to speed things up as well, see this sleep, I'm gonna just get rid of this and go 0 0.2, so it, it reads it much quicker. So let's just try that for a moment. I'm just gonna turn off this code. I'm not gonna use it just yet. Press go, and just see if this works. May take five seconds. Okay, print it to list. Uh, I suppose I've still got that um, delay in my microbit code, right? So if I go back into my microbit code, I've got a bit of a pause there. Okay, I'm gonna drop the pause. And, oh, whoa, am I trying to write over serial while it's still working? Ugh, that might be a bit dodge. Hopefully that, that, has, that has sped it up a little bit there now. Because this is an import, I'm gonna just tidy this away the top of my program. Oh, sorry, I already put it in there, magic. Um, then uh, the path, well, I wanna call this light data. It doesn't matter what you wanna call your CSV. This will override it each time. Mm, I'm not going to override it each time. I'm just gonna go add append, as in like append. Yeah, add at the end. Otherwise, it's gonna wipe out my spreadsheet every time I run the program. Maybe you want to start it fresh, but it's up to you. Um, this line, basically, I don't want to write this out every time, so it just, it just shortens it down to CSV, or right? Um, that's all it does. And I'm gonna literally write this just as a test to see if this works. You know, don't be too ambitious by trying to put all this stuff into your CSV straight away. Honestly, I'm just gonna write the word frog, and this is gonna be badger, and this one's gonna be toast. This is just a test. So I press go, I run the program. It's gonna do five values. It's still a little bit slow I'm finding, you know, this printed to list. I think it, it's, it's, it's waiting for stuff to scroll across the screen on the micro bit side, you know, show number. So do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna get rid of this show number. I don't need to show the number. I know it's writing the serial. And I really think that will speed it up quite a lot. Um, my program's already done now. But let's just see. Press stop and go. Oh wow, that's way faster, isn't it? It was literally waiting for the micro bit to scroll the number like that. So I just skipped that because it's in Thotty now anyway. Delhi, way faster. Um, loads at 420, it's 420. Okay, so what we're gonna do is get this CSV file open. Now, when I press open, you'll notice it's not there anywhere. Ball is, no, don't get distracted, Danny. Best game ever. Um, uh, don't click up on gate three. You're making a video. You're doing productive things. Um, what did I call it? Light data. Sure. Open it up. Ah, there we go. Frog toast. Something. Blah. Okay. Um, you know, I just for now, and you probably should do this. It's good practice. Once you've got anything into your CSV file, pop inside and give it some titles, uh, which will be what you think is going to go into it eventually. So I kind of want, I suppose what do I want, like light level. So light is gonna be my first one. And maybe time, I'll do it over seconds. Now I could do light versus humidity, light versus some other sensor and do my scatter plot that way. But I, I guess most of you will be starting off with time and you'll, you'll have something like this, you know, with light level and then your time will be one and then the light level will be this and then your time will be two. I don't want that space there. Get rid of all these spaces, all right? Um, and that's kind of what your spreadsheet is going to look like. Um, and because it's A, as long as I make that change, that will never get deleted. You know, I can always pop it in and manually clear it what I want to do. So let's press go again. Let it write in some values. I can open up my thing here and it's, <laughs> well, hang on, I have to, I can't have it open. Be aware, you, you should not have programs running and things open at the same time. Stop everything. Close your program, 
Now let me just try that again. Under recent files is probably the fastest way to get to it. Um, so let me get rid of this, save it, go back into my buy and oh yeah, wait, <laughs> I forgot. I don't know why I expected it to be writing data. It was doing exactly what I wanted it to do, it was writing in frog and stuff. But maybe I don't want this. Maybe I want to write in what the signal in is. This is the light signal here and here, right? Um, you know, it says signal. I think I'm going to change this to like light, light data because this is my light level, right? So I'll just select signal in, go find replace, signal in. I'm going to replace with light level. Find, there it is, and just replace all, all right? It just makes more sense, right? Because um, that's what I'm doing in this particular experiment. So light level is going on depend and yada yada. Nothing else has changed. It just saves me having to go through it individually. So now a light level is going to go in instead of literally the word frog. Okay. And I need to put a variable in here. You know, I could just keep going one, one, one. <laughs> but this is going to be time, right? So I need some way of recording the time each time. I need a timer. Now, I could just make a counter, which the most basic thing I could do is make a, like, let's just go like a, like, timer is equal, or well, this is more like a counter, right? Data counter. Counter is equal to counter plus one. And at the very start of my program, up here, make a variable called counter and, and, and start it at zero. And... You know, it's going to do this five times, and then I suppose I'm going to need to just write in whatever the, whatever the counter is here. Um, I'm just going to get rid of as well the printed to list. I'm not really using the list right now; it's just kind of adding clutter, you know. So I can get rid of uh, of that entirely. The list in my class face. Okay, grand. I mean, you can keep it if you're doing means and modes and stuff like that. Uh, right, and then I can put on counter here. Right, light level and counter. And let's press go. Yada, yada, yada. Do you know what I should probably do here is print light level, comma, counter. Look at that. One, two, three, four. Lovely. Now, I, I've stopped the thing. My This should not be open. Danny, what are you doing? Just close that. Don't have that open while you're running your program. Because two things can't be fighting over it. So now, if I go into recent files and open up my CSV file again, I should see... There's some counters. Look, it's kind of, it's kind of doing stuff there. Um, but of course, uh, it's it's not that's not the right counter. But let, let let me just completely clear it off. Save it. Stop it. Just leave the the columns at the top. The column names. Run the program. And now open up my CSV file. And you can see it's only written in the last one, hasn't it? Because, of course, that's that's literally what I did. So maybe uh, instead of having this at the end of my program when it's all done, I could actually put this back inside this loop because I wanted to do this every single time. There we go. All right. And now, again, I'm going to go in here, just clear it. I'm going to leave the headings in, right? Because I, I want that to be the same every time. I press go, run. Okay, and now I... Okay, maybe I'm be sneaky by leaving this open. But it's fine. That is now working. Look, it's counter, 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 counter. Super. Um, a counter is fine, I suppose. Um, but let's say you want uh, something a bit better, you know, actual real time. So, look, that's fine if you're running on a microbit or a Pico offline or something like that. But let's say you want to know how to actually put the real time in seconds, like, like a timer. You can just get Python to check the internet, look what time it is, and then constantly check back in and update the time that way. So, you know, this program could be running fast. That, that five could happen in a millisecond or after over 29 hours, like, it depends on how fast it's, the program's running. It's not really a real time clock. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And I'm gonna change this counter entirely. I'm gonna get rid of the counter. Bye bye, bye counter. But you just did it. You bye. See you later. Okay. The counter was was a nice start, but I actually want the real time. So I've made a little program here for you under handy code. And it's under graphing. 
And what you're going to do is look for something that has something about time in it. Um, simple timer. Here you go. All right. So what this does, it imports time. Well, you've already got sleep. Okay. I it, It's importing time as time now, just to differentiate, you know, because people might be confused. I think a, by default, it's time dot time. That makes no sense. Anyway, <laughs> time now is what I've renamed it to. So I take the start time there. Okay, so I record the time and I call that start time. And then every time I go through my loop, what I'm going to do is just put this into another Python program here. Oh, it's already in there for you. And just run it. Just see, look, lap time, zero, one, two, you know. It's okay, but that is not a counter. That is actually counting real life seconds, you know. Um, so, I'm like, for example, if I went sleep 1.9, something like that, or let's say I did three. It's not, you see, it's still waiting and it's measuring actual time. Three seconds between those went by, seven seconds and yada, 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 you know? Um, so this is, is literally measuring real seconds. And that's kind of what a lot of you will want on your graphs. They want to see when the light level went up, you know, so you can start a timer or, or compare it to a clock or something like that. So this is the time I'm gonna to add to my code. But how do I do that? Well, um, let's let's start by putting some of this importy things at the top. From time import sleep is already there. Okay, so I can get rid of that. Um, I will need to do this from time import time as now. I'm just gonna move this down. I'll keep the I like, for some reason I like to keep my times together. We can start the timer. I mean, you can start at the at the start of your break. Your start your program if you want. I'm gonna get rid of this well true. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it after it, it's done this. It doesn't really matter. Take a break. You deserved it. Oh, maybe I'm gonna get rid of my break. That might cause a traffic jam, but I don't think will now because you see we've got some stuff here afterwards. So I don't need another pause. Elapsed time is equal to time since the program started. Yeah, so that's gonna be yeah. Um, and I don't need this sleep in here anymore. It's gonna. I think I'll. Let's, let's just let's just go. Let's just see what happens here. All right. Okay. Elapsed time is going to go into my CSV. All right. And this is going to. I'll just put in a comment just saying, like, I don't know, measures time. What it's doing is it's looking at what, um, what time, the program started at. Yeah, and it's then looking what time it is right now and subtracting the two to find the difference. And that will give me 1.29, blah, 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 which is a lot of decimals. So it rounds it off and then it calls that how much time has elapsed. That's how it works. All right. So um, what you're going to do then is just press go and just see what happens. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> counter is not defined. Ah, I thought I deleted you everywhere, counter. Curse you, counter. All right. Uh, that should be that should be elapsed time. Oh wait, I can't print it there yet because of, like I'm referencing it before assignment. No, okay, fine. I'll just stick it down here. I could have just deleted it, but you know. Okay, there you go. So that was actually happening very, very fast. So maybe um, now that's happening so fast, I could change the for X in range five. Why don't you do it like 11 times and just see what happens there. There you go. Okay, now I've got an issue here where the elapsed time is not it doesn't seem to be that didn't seem like was that was that really one second hang on a second i think it's just jamming at one let me change this to 20 just to see if it actually gets to three seconds one two no it's just, you know actually you know what i thought it was a bug but it's not it's just happening very fast that genuinely was three seconds cool i might want to maybe <laughs> delete the similar values but like I don't necessarily have to. Um, I suppose I could probably sneak in a little a little pause in there now to stop that similar. So like if I went um, sleep, but you just deleted it. Yeah, putting it back in. Okay, I didn't like I didn't like getting the same ones as <laughs> a, gal a gazillion times. All right, fine. Let me see if I put in this one sleep. Will that reduce the amount of duplicate things? Okay, maybe I need to slow this program down just a little bit. It's getting too excited. So I press stop. 
um, run the thing. One, two, yeah, okay. That looks a bit better now. Yeah, because because it, I put in that one, it's going to be either one or slightly more. So it can't do more than one a second when there's already a second delay in there. Deadly. I'm going to stop the program there. So this is our goal reached. We have the time in seconds on the right-hand column. We have the light level on the left-hand column. Brilliant. And that's in a CSV. And that is ready to go on a graph. And a graph is the next step. Okay, great. Let me just tidy this up a little bit. So I get rid of my list and stuff like that. I'm not really using that at the moment. Great. Um, I'm going to ba -ba -da, get rid of most of this junk to make the program easier for you to read. 20 points of data. Yeah, that's still fine. Um, I probably, yeah, let's just do five. And grant. Everything there is fine. This here is the time. So because it's, this is all the, the time stuff, I'm just going to keep this as like a a block of code. Then I guess this is just printing out stuff. Actually, I'm going to put this. I'm going to put that in the same block because this is all time stuff. And then this is CSV file stuff. Having your code organize. And then closing it. Brilliant. And now we're on to graphing stuff. Graph things. So the bit of code I'm going to give you here is actually from ALT3 simulations. So go back into handy code here and you'll find it. This example, the simulation from CSV file does kind of what we're, we're all going to do you know, in this, but I'm just going to go down to, I think it was like line 95 or something like that. I'm going to take a little snip out of this code. Ah, yeah, here we go, right? So look, we're going to get the, the trend line and graphs and all that kind of stuff. So from 95 down to 116, let's copy that there. I'm going to put it in here. I, I'm, I'm not going to do this every time. So I'm going to unindent and put this here. I, I, I kind of want this to be out of my loop. Does that make sense? So it's going to do this five times. When it's done, I'm going to make a graph. But I don't need to make like a graph five times in the loop. I don't want five graphs. I just want one graph. Great. So some of these things are just, they don't match my data. So the first thing you need to do is change the name of your CSV. Light data was the name of my CSV. The next thing is the column headers. These do matter. And that is why, looking ahead, I wrote these. These were not for fun and games. That was important. Light and time. So let me just put it in here. It's light and time. So I need light. Oh, time is actually the same. That's fine. Okay, you will get an error if you don't name, because it's what what pandas, this module here, PD, is pandas, pandas. Oh, speaking of pandas, I need to do some of these. See up here, when I, when I imported stuff, I need like all of this, all of this panda stuff. Um, so I'm going to put in that uh, in, in my imports, and I'll just delete the stuff that is, a, is already doubled up. So look, I already have CSV, I don't need that. I don't have pandas, I need to keep that. I, I might need numpy, numpy. Uh, or if you're a replacement, I don't need and matplotlib, matplot library. I'm gonna keep so those imports I I need. Otherwise, I get an error. Let's go with our graph. So let's continue just updating it to suit our program. We've got light data. We've got light and time. That all looks fine. Nothing wrong there at all. I've called them x and y uncontroversially, and then it de don't worry about this right now. I've obviously like x. What did I say? X is light. So X label should be light and the Y level should be time. I'm not sure that's right. I think they might be the wrong way around because surely it goes X, Y, right? Why does it say, ah, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, I can always switch them around later on. Cool. And then it's going to calculate the equation line. That's Y because I'm explicit and all that sort of thing. Right. Um, the actual stuff happens where it graphs is where it says plot.show this saves it as a as a picture for you as well to open up so let's let it run it should go five times one two three four five and then it's going to try and do a graph for me there we go okay so i could see there is sort of a downward trend in the light there um so let me open up my light data okay there's quite a lot in there uh i'm going to just clear this entirely save it and then run the program again so that I only just have that more recent five points of light data. Run this. 
just be careful not to delete the titles of your, you know, your light and time. There we go. Polyfit may be poorly. Yeah, it is very poorly. <laughs> okay, so it looks like um, because the values were identical the whole time, uh, you know, it, it had a struggle graphing. So what I'm going to do is going to go 10. I'll pop back in here and delete any of these these values. I'm going to run it again. This time I'm kind of going to use my oops, going to use my phone here, and I'm going to shine a light onto the sensor such that it will change and then I'll have actually something to graph. Okay, so I'm going to press go, let it run there. And let me just see if I can move this up and around. No, it's going to, should be getting brighter as I go. Okay, there we go. Right. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think uh the axes are quite right i feel like i've i've me messed up my my x and y's this whole thing is looking very very back to fronty okay so let me just see if i can go and fix that um so uh csv is light and time yeah light and time that's fine okay but i really want my i want my x axis to be the time and my, my, my y to be the light I think that's a better idea. Yeah. So my Y is now going to be my life. These, these, these next two are just labels. So they, they won't break your program. <laughs> these will. That needs to be right. So let's press go again. Oh, I'm going to clear the data. Save. And then press go. Let's have a look. Oh, I need to make it brighter and stuff. Or lighter. And turn on torches. There we go. So it's changing. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty, pretty unhappy. Whoa. Time not found in index. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this little return thing, I think, is important. Because if I delete it and it actually goes back to here, it starts by adding on stuff here, which is bad. So I'm going to leave this little bit here. Wow. That's, that's something to watch out for, I suppose. Okay. So let's clear and run the program again. Okay, great. That looks much, much, much better. Okay, so you can see the light value was going down over time, which makes sense. Because remember I said, the more light, the less the value. Does that sort of make sense? Great. Um, and what it's done is, it's given me the uh, slope. That's Y equals M X plus C, that's M. The Y intercept. And y equals mx plus c, so there it is. I mean, that's that's pretty good actually, you know. But this is great because now that I've got my graph, um, I can use these x and y values to make a future prediction. So if I know roughly the slope of the line, I can say, okay, well look, if it's there when it's ten, what's it going to be when it's twenty? You know. And this is the classic maths of going across to the x-axis and 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 finding out. So, um. The modeling prediction and simulation will be the next part. So to make future predictions, we're going to use this equation y equals mx plus c. Basically describes where the line is going to be at a certain time if the x-axis is time. So let's just write in what we know because it might look like confusing algebra right now, but we already know that y the y-axis is just light right that's the light level okay so if we know that's the light level we can just write in what the other things are this is the slope the slope the slopiness of the line okay so a value you know um if the slope is zero slope is one and yes just the slantiness of it x we know is time so times time i'll just put i don't want to put an x because this is going to be <laughs> confusing um and then plus uh this is the y intercept and enter i'll put a capital c just remind you Sept. intercept right um all oh, right how does that help us so we know they are but how does that make us like a simulation or prediction? Well, we just need to rearrange this equation, which I'm sure everyone loves to do. 
Um, and actually, it's not too bad because look, this is this is easy. We're trying to find the light level at a certain time. We already know the slope. Python works it out for us from their CSV file. We know the intercept, and we are going to enter a certain time to find a certain light level. Okay, so you it's like so. My question is, what is the light level? Question mark when you know at a, at a certain time so let's say what is the light level um 23 24 seconds in right um well i know that it's whatever the slope is and the intercept and that that these two are going to be worked out by python and you saw that it doesn't happen now it's a bit weird right because in, in our program they're referred to as <laughs> z0 and z1 in this polyfit sort of a thing all right um i'm not going to explain this right now <laughs> because uh well suffice to say there's a lot there's a lot to it it's gonna get very heavy matsy but put it put it this way you see the way that's like a one yeah uh this is kind of like one x and then if there was a two i think that's like gonna be you know an x squared like a um a frowny face or a smiley face like a bendy line and then three will be cubic it's a polynomial poly mean many may, and fit as in many line fits but when it's one there's just one x in the equation as in y equals mx plus c not you know a quadratic um so we're going to just assume now look your data might be something like a lot more slopey but we're going to assume that it's linear just to keep it nice and simple right we're not doing um anything crazy here so um right knowing that you can copy paste this in i think maybe you see the way i've said this slope is this and the intercept is this because this is basically look y equals mx plus c um i think what we should do is just use the actual mx plus c i know which is not fully easy to understand but oh, what well, hang on a second wait a second can't we just use a a variable called slope slope is equal to this oh yeah now um that's in there what 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 oh sorry there there's no and the intercept we'll make an a variable called intercept um which is going to be this one all right um i mean why they are that it comes it comes it has to do with basically the equation of line which this works out and they'll be different depending on its quadratic but that's what, that's it just trust me that's what they are or you know you could write this as maybe m for slope and c you know y equals mx plus c it's another way of saying so yeah i i think maybe I'll, I'll leave them like this because that matches up perfectly with what we're about to do here right here so we know um what m is we're going to ask them what the time is that's going to be our um like at a given time or actually no we well we yeah i i think this will do so let's just say uh, x is the time right so x is equal to input and we're going to say um you know what time are you interested in finding out the light level we're gonna let the user decide what the time is going to be um question mark oh that's like in seconds like eg six don't i mean, it might because otherwise they might type in seconds and that's gonna mess it up it, this is supposed to be an integer cool great we're almost there and then y is equal to well we have the equation right here y equals equal to m x plus c nice and then we just go print y surely it can't be that easy i guess we're gonna find out all right um let's just bang it in so it's gonna get me some data first then it's gonna graph me that data what did I set it to? Is it is it set to twenty or something? Is it? Oh, there's the data. Okay. Well, it's a bit all over the place, but it looks fine. Okay. The equation of the line is this. Very good. Ah. Okay. But what's interesting is, 
it has not asked me. It says printed. Okay, very good. Plot that show. I have to close this graph before it goes on to the next part of the program. Close that graph. What time are you interested in finding at the light level? E.g. six. Uh, yeah, let's do seven. So when one is seven, what's the other one? Oh, oh, sorry. Mx. I forgot to multiply. No. That's the multiplication sign. I was getting two algebra. E. M times x in Python. It that's okay. Okay, I guess we could just do it again. You can't multiply a sequence by a not. Oh, of course, I forgot that input always gets inputted as a string. So that whole thing needs to become an integer or a float or whatever. Okay, so I'll just put in like integer will be fine. Int. There we go. So I've now turned it into a number. And <laughs> let's try one more time. Seven. There we go. All right, the light level will be that seven seconds in, and that's my prediction. Pretty cool. All right, so that is a, a simulation. It's made a graph, it's made a trend line, it's looked at the trends, and it's saying, hey, when the seconds are seven, the light will be that. Um, how could you do it the other way? Could we say if the light level was this, um, how long until the light level becomes that, you know? Um, how long until it gets this bright? Maybe you could be like, well, um, I want my alarm clock to go off when it's this bright. You know, how would I predict that? Well, I don't know. I, I just rearrange this equation, right? So uh, if I go back into, into paint here, so all we have to do to figure out what the time will be when the light level is a certain value is just rearrange this equation a bit, you know? So um, here's a bit of maths for you. We want to isolate the time because that's what we're trying to find. That's our target variable. Isolate that by itself. Get everything. Get out of here. The other side of the equal sign. So you make a bit of space. Bum, 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 bum. I haven't changed anything. I just moved it over here. Because this guy, this plus, is about to cross the equal sign. And when it crosses into this mirror universe, everything becomes flipped. You are now a minus. You've gone from good to evil. Okay. So it's now y minus c, right? And then same, you know, we know the slope. That's going to come out of Python. But right now it's multiplying. And the opposite of multiply when you go into the mirror universe is, not multiply, divide. So this is going to be, I'll just do like a, a little line here. Wow. Like paint's just got too fancy. There's too many clicks, clicks to get... There's a thing, all right? So that is my my equation. And in Python, that's going to look like what? Um, it's going to say x. Paint 3D is not as good as regular paint. Um, so this is what it's going to be in Python. It's going to look like x is equal to y minus c. I'm going to just put that in brackets just to show you that that's all staying together. And then in Python, it's forward slash for divide by m. And that's going to be our equation to find x. So this is my target variable, what's coming out of the equation. And, you know, we now know that y is the bit that I'm going to type in. So that's my input there. We don't need to do these two things again because I already did them. The only thing we're going to do is copy this and change it up a little bit. So last time I said, what time are you interested in? Next, what, I'm just saying, what light level are you interested in finding out the time for in seconds? Okay, e.g. like a light level, so 204 or something like that. I don't know what it's measured in. The equation has just changed around to what we have here. It's now x is equal to y minus c divided by m and print x. There we go. So let's give that a go and see what happens. Um, I'm still not sure about this, um, this uppy downy thing. Like I'd love to, I, I must have two sets of data in that, in that CSV file. Let me just open that CSV file. Cause does that graph not look a bit, why is there two? <laughs> that makes no sense. Oh yeah, look. One series of data, another series of data. Okay. 
yeah i suppose i'm gonna have to put in something to clean my data every time uh or i could change it to write mode you know it's just that if i if i change it to write mode it might actually delete this which will break the whole program so what i've seen people do before is they have a program as a function up here like a block of code that just opens up the spreadsheet makes it puts in the two titles and then closes it and then it runs all of the other stuff such that you know when it, it sets the second half to write mode it doesn't uh overwrite this if that makes sense so the new like write mode with this so blank blank thing and then and then they go append after that and that that sort of seems to, to fix it i've seen that um done before so let's have a go um did it ask me a question oh you have to close this graph up before i get asked a question light level let's do eight this time it gives me something what light level are you interested in now two or four so what when it was one, one two three what would be the time in seconds eight seconds in to that uh pattern eight seconds in roughly <laughs> zero zero nine three um it should be at that a light level 123 okay which kind of makes sense because it was going down slowly if i don't like this many 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 zeros i could go just round this off like that and i could round it off to two decimal places or if i just leave round it'll just print eight okay so eight comma seconds all right and that will well, that's there's two things predicted you predicted light levels and you've predicted the time so that's kind of it 